Meet Dungan Bongani Tobela, born 24 September 1966 and affectionately known as the Rose of Soweto. This world-renowned boxer put South Africa and Soweto on the map. Raised in Shawelo, this is the story of the rose that grew out of concrete. Hi, I'm Dungan Tobela, Rose of Soweto, three times world champion. I am Soweto. When I was born, you know, three days later, uh, my mom has to take me to, to my grandmother because my mom couldn't afford to, you know, to bring me up. Uh, my grandmother accepted me. Um, I was born as, as Bongani, as my name was Bongani. Uh, when I was taken by, accepted by my grandmother, uh, I was called Dingani from there on. At the height of civil disobedience in the townships, with students protesting against the unjust apartheid laws, a young Dungan had to navigate between doing the right thing and supporting the cause. You know, like any other kid, uh, who, you know, his upbringing is very tough, you know, especially mm -hmm. in the black township. In uh, 1976, you know, I was one of those kids that will be throwing stones, you know, at uh, the police, you know, who were fighting us and all that. So I grew up in that life, you know. Mm. I went to school. I went to Hitekani Primary School. My higher primary school is called a higher secondary at the time. Mm. Uh, it was called the Ngumunyan, and uh, I went to college. Mm. So, um, which is switch, switch to teachers in college. That's where I finished my education. A naturally gifted athlete, Degan spent many childhood days playing several sports. He excelled in karate, athletics, and soccer, and many thought he'd follow in the legendary footsteps of fellow Sowetans such as Keza Mutawong. But fate had other plans for the young Sowetan. I was an all rounder, you know, I was running long distance, short distance, sprint, and all that. And I, finally, I got to, you know, get closer to boxing, mm. where my dad, you know, bought me a pair of gloves. I started, you know, boxing in the in my backyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I surpassed all adversity, mm -hmm. beating up everybody. That's when my talent was, was identified from there. Dingan received tutelage under the renowned Norman Shabani. Shabani trained Tobela through 83 amateur fights, of which he only lost three. So turning pro was the obvious choice, but even that was fought with its own challenges. It was more of having to defend myself. Mm -hmm. you know? But that led to complaints coming mm. in around to say, uh, maybe I'm bullying, I'm fighting with the other kids. Mm. But I was defending myself. Um, my dad realized that uh, because of these complaints and all that, and uh, consistently so, they keep coming. Um, it was easy for him to channel me to talk to his friend who was in the at the time. Mm. And it happened to be a boxing trainer. So I joined the gym from there. Yeah, Norman Klavan had played a very important role in my life, you know, having to guide me through, having to monitor me, you know, having to, you know, show me how to go about, you know, you know, training my thought and all that. His training my thought made me to be more sure, more sure of myself. Um, not only that part, uh, him having to be a father, you know, he became part of my life, you know, he became a family, you know, I would be glued with him from time to time, even when we go overseas, or we we'll go and try to camp, we will be together and I'll do things as he, as I'm taught. Mm -hmm. It was not easy to, you know, face out from amateur to professional. Uh, but I'll start from the amateurs, you know. Before you go to professional, you know, you got to go through certain steps to be able to be taken to the professional ranks. I had to fight for the South African Amateur Championship and win that, mm -hmm. you know. And then from there, Norman Klaban realized that now I'm ready to go to the professional ranks. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to be 
license and I got to get the first fight against Queen John Bryan. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my first uh, opponent actually in the professional ranks. And there was all sorts of challenges there mm -hmm. uh, because before the fight, uh, Queen John Bryan's friends and family and all that came to, you know, uh, push me around at the dressing room when Norman Clavin was not there. And I got to fight with them before I fight with Kim John Ryan. And that made me more angry and more sure that, you know what, it means they're scared, that's why they intimidated me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I jumped into the ring and I performed to the best of my ability. And uh, that was so thrilling and exciting to win my first professional fight. His most infamous fight was with American native Tony Lopez. Lopez won the bout on a hotly contested decision. Dingan decided to challenge this and a rematch was set for Sun City, South Africa. Tony Lopez at the, at the time was my senior. He was one of those uh, renowned world champions. Uh, he has fought the likes of Brian Mitchell even before I fought him, you know. So I knew that uh, I'm facing, I'm going to go against one of the top, top and tough fighters uh, of all time. But when I signed the contract uh, to fight him, uh, with all the uh, support that I had with, from my trainer and my stable mate and all that, and knowing that I'm going to represent South Africa, you know, mm. that uh, inspired me a lot to say, let me go get it. Mm. You know, I signed the contract, we prepared for the, the fight. I really, I went all out to train. I was well conditioned for that fight. And we flew all the way to Sacramento. When we got there, you will you could see that they also have fear because they were asking us of questions and you are from Africa, what is Africa like? You know, then they wanted to ascertain what kind of person I am. And uh, we got there, we went through all sorts of challenges, you know, media, uh, you know, fans intimidating you, telling you how strong to be person is. But because I was sure that I trained hard and prepared for the fight, I waited for that day. Come that day, I was ready, I jumped into the ring. Uh, when we touched gloves, I could tell that I've got a new chance. Mm -hmm. And I put a lot of effort. Unfortunately, you know, um, at the end, the end result was that Tony Lopez retained his title and that was the electorate. And that was echoed by the WPA, which is a world organization, to say we want to get an immediate return fight because that was the electorate. I was very disappointed, you know. I went there with great pride to know that I'm representing South Africa and I was sure that I would bring the title back home. You know. That's what I promised my fans uh, when I left the country to say I will be the champion. I wanted to be the champion. That's why I would left. But unfortunately, uh, with the results, you know, which is the boxing language, the judges' decision is final, I had to accept it and uh, lodge a complaint. You know, to the and uh, they, had, they had me out as they look into the fight, they had to review the fight and, and they realized that uh, my complaint was genuine and uh, they ordered uh, for the return fight. He weighed in at 61.24 kilograms with a fight record of 29 contested fights, 27 wins with one loss and one drawn. He's South Africa's number one. He's the Rose of Soweto, Dingan Tupela! Well, the return fight uh, with Tony Lopez uh, it took place at Sun City. Um, you know, my handlers had to pull all stops you know, to be able to bring it to the country, you know, because. Uh, the outcry was throughout the country that uh, they needed to see the fight again. You know? And the promoter put it together, we had to fight at Sun City. And it was one of those most well attended uh, uh, boxing tournaments. Yeah, I still remember it to date. You know? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Well, there you go, it's unanimous. Judge Fernando. Viso scores the fight. 119-112. Judge Marcus Torres scores the fight. 116-114. Judge Hector Hernandez scores the fight. 116-114.
sitting here and I'm proud to have become the two times world champion on that night you know, representing my country uh, at home it was sweet you know to, to be able to to say to my fight fans I am the WBA world champion. Growing up in Soweto you know had all sorts of advantage and disadvantage you know um, the advantage was uh, that you become a sweater and be more sure of yourself. Uh, the disadvantage as a sportsman uh, that opportunities were not uh, presenting themselves easier than any other fighter who would be probably a white fighter or otherwise. So, uh, but through that, I had to break through, you know, and make all my chances uh, that I presented to me, make them, make them that I make sure that I have to grab them to make sure that I surpass and become a true champion. But it wasn't easy, you know, as much as I'm saying it today. But it wasn't easy, it was a challenge, it was, you know, I had to climb the ladder to be able to do that. But uh, because of the support I had, you know, in Soweto, which I still got that support to date, um, that has made me more sure. I knew that as soon as I get out of the country, get out of the province, get out of South Africa, to go and represent South Africans. South Africans will be behind me. Uh, that was the name that Rose of Soweto came in, you know, because the support that uh, I got from people, you know, started from Soweto, then it grew nationally. I was one of those uh, first few fighters who came out of Soweto and became a world champion. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was something new. Uh, we had Peter Tiaram and Tegula that inspired me that I looked up to him but he was not really based in Soweto, he was you know, on the outskirts of Soweto. But coming into Soweto, I was one of the first few uh, to have gone to have gone to win a world title, mm -hmm. which is a WBO, my first world title. You know? mm -hmm. um, and the support that I got from the Soweto uh, made me grow, you know, uh, and become more sure of myself to be able to become, you know, 20 times world champion. You know, but I couldn't reach that stage, but I became three times more champion. Having seen the world and mingled with the who's who of society, Dingan returned to his hometown of Soweto and established the Rose Funeral Parlor, located in Shawelo. Dingan sees this as an opportunity to be of service to the community of Soweto that's held him through good times and bad. Well, being a world champion has given birth to what I am today, which is the funeral business. Uh, due to the support, you know, that's why I came to the name The Rose. That's why even the power is called The Rose Funerals, because it is a support from boxing and coming into the business life. Uh, the Rose Funerals has to be established to help those who are able to help themselves. So I'm very helpful, I'm very grateful that uh, Sowetan supported me as an athlete and now they're supporting me in business. Well, I chose to serve the nation and everyone that supported me while I was still an athlete uh, by opening up a funeral parlor to help those who are able to help themselves. Mm -hmm. In the sense that these destitute families, these people who are unable to, you know, when death strike in the family, uh, people get confused. Mm -hmm. But I was there to be able to make things easier for them uh, so that they can bury their loved one with, uh, in a dignified manner. Knowing what I know now, uh, having to help the youngster who will want to emulate me, um, I will be you know, advising them to, you know, to show them that in life, nothing is impossible. You know, if you want to go be something in life, you go get it. Put a lot of effort into it, dedicate your time, your life, and uh, you will be able to be what you want. Mm -hmm. How I want to be remembered is that uh, I want people to remember me as a world champion, uh, as a businessman, as someone that has made uh, Soweto to be more sure of themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, Soweto, it's my life. 
Soweto is my pride. Uh, Soweto is my beginning. Without Soweto, I would be nothing today. So I would always be a Soweto in the wash of myself. Three times world champion, a son, a brother, a father, and the Rose of Soweto. Meet Tigan Bongani Tobela. Meet Soweto.